Hello there. As you may know already, there's a new powerful feature in Inkscape 1.3. I'm talking about Shape Builder tool. That's right, there's a dedicated Shape Builder tool similar to Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer. So let's test out and learn how to use this new feature. Here I am in my document. As you can see, I already draw some shapes and our goal will be to unite them into a cloud. Before I start, let's address the elephant in the room. There's a little problem with Shape Builder right now. Let me show you what I mean. If I select those shapes, like that, and use the classic approach. So I go to, for Path and simply unite them. All right, we made one shape out of those circles. On inspection with the Node tool, we can notice that we got very nicely aligned nodes. Everything is smooth and nice as it should be. All right. But if I undo, I select them once more. And this time I use the Shape Builder, what is over here. Shape Builder tool, that's this new tool. I click on it. For a moment, everything will like gray out. I can see only selected shapes. All right, and now we got two modes, plus and minus mode for adding stuff so we can make a union or for subtracting shapes. Let's go with plus so we can simply click and drag across those circles. And now I need to confirm this operation. I finish up and it seems like a very same result at first, but on the inspection, you see it already. We got many totally unnecessary nodes. Let me just zoom in. Look at that. This is supposed to be just arc from a circle. So there will be one node here and one over here. Everything else on this line is unnecessary node that will make editing this further more complex. Okay, so this is already known problem. It was reported and it will be fixed in version 1.31. So they're going to release a patch that will fix this very, very soon. So if you are watching this in the future, they probably already fixed this issue. But if you notice this in your software like today, just letting you know, they are already working to solve that. I think they solved it already. They just need to release the patch to the public. All right, so that's the problem right now. But that's not the main topic of this video. Let's undo this action and finally try out the Shape Builder tool. So I'm going to select all of those shapes. So that's the first thing you need to do. You need to select shapes you wanna use for shape building. Select them all, then click a Shape Builder from the tool list. If you do that, your shapes will turn gray. Everything around will be invisible for a moment. And as I mentioned, we got two modes, plus and minus mode. If you start with minus mode, you got this pinkish color to remove parts of the shape. Then with plus mode, you can click and hold and show what you wanna unite. And at the end of the process, you need to confirm or deny the changes. So if I click OK, here's my new shape. It's vector shape, I can change the stroke, I can fill it with color, I can do whatever I want with it. All right, so that's our first example, little cloud. Let's move to the next one. What do we have here? If you draw multiple shapes like this, and select them all together, you can generate a new shape out of it with just one action using this Shape Builder tool. In the past, you need multiple actions, but now with Shape Builder, we can simply select what we need. Keep in mind, Shape Builder got auto clean, so he will clean up part of the shape you didn't use for shape building. You see the gray area? If something is marked with the gray color, it will be cleaned out. It will be erased automatically, so you don't need to go with minus and erase that. So if I click OK, 
the gray areas are gone and I got only this flower shape I need from that grid. And speaking of grid, shape builder can be used with lines. In that case, I just draw lines that are not close shapes, just lines. If I select all of those lines together and shape builder, as you can see, any close area, any intersection can be used to build a shape. This technique is some, sometimes used to build some logos or fancy letters. So we can actually create a grid for ourselves to build shapes as we please. And then when I click OK, the gray areas are clean and I end up with those shapes. So shape builder tool is very handy if you're working with some kind of grid. That's a nice apply of this tool. And here's the, another case. Normally in the past to make this nice infinite symbol, we need to do multiple operations. We need to pay attention to the layer panel, what is above, what is below. And now we can just simply select all of those shapes. And if you go with shape builder, select what you need. And as I mentioned, the gray areas, they will be cleaned up for you. So you don't need to worry about them. This auto cleanup is also existing in Adobe Illustrator. It's also in Affinity Designer. But I think here they're showing us visually that all oh, the gray area is here. Do you want it? Or we will get rid of it. I really like the fact that we can see it before they clean it up for us. And I click OK. And we got very nice infinity symbol here. What next? That's our last example. Let's select all shapes. That's what we always need to do. Select all of them. Shape build the tool. And then you can simply move this. That's one shape I want. And then this will be separate shape. Take a look, there's line between them. So we can create multiple shapes in one go. You don't need to just unite all of it together. We can create multiple shapes. Oh, uh, it was too much. What should I do now? Very simple undo. Command Z, Control Z, and try again. Okay. So as you can see, we can create multiple shapes on one go. I'm still in the same go. And the middle, it's in gray color. It will be cleaned up automatically. So I click OK. And take a look how fast it was. And of course, each element is a separate shape now. So I can apply any fill color I want to it. Everything is separate here. So that's really, really nice. And I think if they can manage to make the path a bit simple, because as I mentioned, if we inspect the path, take a look, it's a bit too complex now. But the patch is coming and with this fine addition, the shape building will be even easier in Inkscape. You know what's the best way to learn a new tool? To practice. So go to the description. I will post a link to this practice file so you can try to use all of those examples yourself. And you can try to make similar or <laughs> your own freestyle shapes out of them, okay? So just download the free file and try for yourself. We got five examples and you can learn how to use this shape builder tool by yourself. All right. Thank you for today. If you'd like to learn more with me, keep in mind, you can subscribe to see my tutorials every week. Thank you for today and I will see you next time. Bye.